Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we've been talking about lapping. Uh, we've prepared uh, three cast iron plates that we're going to lap together using the three plate method. Um, and in the last video uh, we came to a conclusion and uh, now we need to talk about abrasives. So uh, unfortunately I'm going to have to go full nerdic on this. Okay, so now we can have a proper technical discussion about the different types of abrasives. Let's take a look back on the, uh, in the lapping area there where we're going to lap these plates and let's talk about the different kinds of abrasives that are available to us to, uh, to, to uh, finish these plates. These are the abrasives that I have on hand here. Um, and we're going to use, uh, actually we're going to use this time saver uh, product. And this is a, uh, um, it's a garnet. Uh, a non-embedding type of garnet and the abrasive uh, breaks down as it gets used so it gets finer and finer as you use it. So this is actually a, a sample kit that I got um, and it has two types in it. One is for hard materials and one is for soft materials or red metals like uh, uh, brass, bronze, babbitt, stuff like that. Um, and the other is for steels and, um, and hardened gears and things like that. So um, now if you guys decide you want to try some of this stuff, it's actually pretty good and um, um, it's cheap and it works real well and what's nice is it does break down and, uh, and kind of goes away. So, um, But I probably wouldn't buy the test kit because the course uh, the, the coarser versions here are really coarse, so really all you really need is the fine and the very fine. So um, if you were going to get this kit, I would just buy the individual uh, little tins of, uh, you know, for testing or whatever if you want to experiment with this. In fact, I, I've x these out because they're just so coarse. So uh, um, anyway, so that's a, that's a garnet abrasive, which is a natural abrasive, and this... Uh, breaks down under pressure and action and um, um, does not embed in the surface and we're going to talk about that a little more. So uh, this is uh, probably familiar to a lot of you guys. This is uh, the old clover valve lapping compound um, and this actually is is cheap and easy to use. Um, it cuts really well and it, it's silicon carbide which is a very kind of pointed uh, abrasive and it's very sharp, uh, although it does break down as you use it and gets finer and finer. And once again, the coarse on this is very, very coarse. Uh, so this would work fine if you have some of this, and uh, you probably end up just using the fine. Uh, and this is in a grease suspension here, and we're going to talk about films and stuff in a minute too. So that's another type. Um, then we have uh, garnet, uh, which is... Uh, um, well, it's actually similar to that, and this does break down too. This is real fine stuff here. This is 4 micron. Um, somebody gave me some of this, and so I, I took a little jar, and, uh, and I'm, I was trying it. Uh, we're probably not going to use this on, uh, on this particular project. Excuse me. Then you have, uh, uh, this is a, uh, another type here, uh, and I've talked about this in the other, a couple other videos. This is a... Um, um, calcinated alumina and uh, it's got kind of a um, uh, a flat laminar um, abrasive shape so this is uh, suitable for doing uh, really uh, high finishes and stuff so we may use some of this to uh, to get to real fine fin get out for there uh, uh, real fine finishes on our on our project there okay and then you got the uh, the top of the heap here which is diamond. Um, this is a diamond slurry here, so it's, a, it's diamond particles uh, that are in a suspension and a carrier. Uh, this happens to be water soluble stuff here, which is um, probably um, preferable for most folks. It's easy to clean up. Um, I bought this off eBay. A uh, guy has a whole bunch of it and for reasonable prices, and, uh, and I'm just kind of trying it out, uh, his product anyway. Um, and then this is Diamond Paste. Uh, this is a McMaster car, this particular one here, uh, Diamond Innovations. And this is 12 micron here. This is good for a little spot, uh, you know, if you wanted to do like some micrometer anvils or something like that, that would be a good one. So this is for, 
you know, you can dispense with all this stuff if you go straight to Diamond. Diamond works pretty good on everything, uh, although it's more expensive and, um, um, you know, you end up buying a bunch of them to, uh, to get it graded or, you know, to progress to finish the way you want. Okay, I think it's time for a sketch. We'll, uh, let's do a sketch and then I'll show you some of the other uh, factors for, uh, about the abrasives. All right, you guys ready for a sketch? Um, so there's basically two fundamental kinds of lapping. Uh, there's a, what's called free, let's see, am I right now? Yeah, free abrasive. Okay. And uh, fixed abrasive. All right. So the difference between this is, as it seems, free abrasives are the abrasive can roll around uh, between the specimen and the lap itself and in the fixed um, the abrasive grains are generally fixed or embedded or charged okay into the um, into the lap okay so sometimes called also wet and uh, dry lapping okay so we're gonna actually do both which is kinda cool so dry is a little bit of a misnomer because you, you use a, a little bit of solvent on it uh, just to keep things moving, okay? So what's actually happening here is you have your you have your specimen, okay? And then you have your lap, okay? Now, this is a very small gap, <laughs> much smaller than it is on the paper here. And with the, with the free abrasive, you have abrasive grains that are, uh, that are on the surface, like so. And they're actually rolling um, in a in a fluid film here. Okay, so they're rolling between the this this would be your specimen here. Okay, and then this is the lap itself. Okay, so um, they're rolling, and uh, what they do is as they roll, they carve out little bits of material out of the specimen. Okay. Um, and um, so that's the uh, the uh, the wet or the free abrasive uh, style of lapping. Okay. Now with the uh, with the dry. Okay. What happens? It's now it, it, they kind of cross over one another. So I'll get to that in just a second here. So uh, with dry lapping, what actually happens is you have your lap. Okay. You have your lap, and the abrasive grains actually kind of get embedded. Or charged okay and there's different ways of doing this okay they get charged into the lap itself okay so the lap always wants to be softer softer than the the target material your specimen okay so what happens here is this is more like the classic sandpaper okay although these can be sticking up just tiny tiny amounts right and then we still use a little fluid film here just to keep the swarf and uh, the abraded material uh, uh, moving and getting it out of the way okay so we're actually going to do both both styles here and um, we're going to use a couple different abrasives so uh, we're going to charge some uh, softer laps and then we're going to use a free abrasive slurry um, uh, type lapping for uh, for preparing the laps. Okay, so this will be pretty cool. So let's kind of get set. We're gonna get set up with our uh, cast iron laps to start with, and we'll start lapping those. And uh, let's uh, let's get to town. All right. So here's the uh, the basic setup here. So I got to, this is just a, tr a tray to contain the the uh, glop that uh, comes off of this. Um, we have a uh, just a retainer here that keeps the the lap that's down uh, from sliding around, okay? And then what we have here, this is a, this is this kind of non-skid um, drawer liner or shelf liner or whatever. And I'll show you in a sec when I put a lap in there, it's, it's soft, okay? So that the lap can kind of um, find, uh, find the right level as we're, as we're lapping, because there's variations when we, when we push on the lap you know, the, the forces change vectors and uh, directions. So uh, uh, this helps kind of compensate for that a little bit. All right. So this goes on top like so. And then uh, 
You don't want this too far out in front of you, right? Uh, so you're not leaning over. I mean, you want to kind of be over the top of it if, if possible. Now, you're not using, uh, actually, yeah, okay, this, this will probably work fine. Clamp this down here. And you know, this also gives a, a place for the st stuff to kind of drain away from it here, okay? Now, the next thing is there's a, uh, there's a sequence here, okay? So we go through this sequence with the different abrasives. Uh, we're actually going to start out with the fine stuff because these are already pretty flat. Uh, they've been faced in the lace. So we're going to start with the fine. If we need to go to the course, we'll back up and go to the course. But I think uh, it'll go pretty quickly here. Um, so the first sequence is A on B and then B on A and then B on C, C on B, A on C. Okay, so that's one cycle, okay? And then within those, within those cycles, we're doing some stuff uh, in, within those cycles. So, so A on B, so this would be, uh, so this is B, we're gonna put B down, and then uh, we'll put the, uh, the starting position, uh, we'll just line it up with our notch here to begin with. And uh, now you see what the, this retainer does for you, so when I'm pushing on this, it, it doesn't, doesn't go anywhere, okay? All right, and then we're going to do A on B. All right, so this is a, this is a sequence here now. Okay, now let's talk about these marks around the periphery here. I've got it marked every 90 degrees, okay? And these are going to be important because we want to, uh, um, uh, as, we're, as we're lapping, we're going to rotate these, okay? Uh, we're going to rotate these around. Okay, we're going to do a few strokes and we're going to rotate, we're going to do a few strokes, we're going to rotate, we're going to do a few strokes. Okay, um, and then we'll be changing directions of these as well. So now there's a couple of motions that we're going to be doing here, okay. The, the, it's the straight line motion. So the classic telescope maker, uh, what they do is they, they have a kind of a post that's out in the middle of the room and they just kind of walk around the post in a circle, right? Uh, and they just keep they just keep going the same way, and then they just they just walk around this post 360 degrees, and that's one course around there. But since I don't have a post handy, um, we can do it with this with uh, with marks. So we have a a linear motion like this. Then we have a we have a rotary motion too. Okay, and both of these are important and uh, to, to getting a good flat surface, okay? So if you imagine the center of this is right where the A is, and then you have the center of the other plate, we're only gonna, that distance um, from here to here, we're only gonna move about one third, okay? One third of that radial distance, okay? So something like that. That's all you're gonna do. There's, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna go really far, okay? Because what happens then is you you can introduce um, tilting, okay, which is not cool, okay. All right, so about a third. Remember that. All right, you can just kind of look here and, and see, just so um, you're doing it the same, okay. And what we want is we want we don't want to like lean on this, okay. We want there's you know this got a fair amount of weight, so we're just going to push on a little bit to keep it in good contact with the. Uh, with the other lap, all right? And then we'll rotate it, do some more, rotate it, do some more. And then once we make it all the way around, then we're gonna do some, some circular, okay, in both directions, okay? And there's a reason for that, too. So uh, this segment's getting kind of long, so let's uh, reset the camera and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so, if you look at if you look at this motion here, and we're just we're just moving it in a linear fashion, right? So, what tends to happen is this tends to wear concave, and this tends to wear convex. That's why we flip the sides, and that's why you need the the third plate in the mix. Okay, so you can match these two together perfectly by flipping them back and forth, but the third one makes it impossible to, to do that. So you, what ha ends up happening, and this is the classic three plate method, is you generate a flat plane then, okay, by introducing the third one. Now you can do it with two, but you have to do two sides of one of them. So, uh, so you, you need three surfaces to make, um, to make a true flat plane without any measuring tools, okay? So now the other thing that's going on here with the lapping is when we do this linear motion, right, if you notice, 
the center is always in contact, no matter what we do, right? And so we rotate it and the center is still in contact. Well, what's happening is for part of that stroke, some of this upper lap is coming off of the lower lap, right? So that part's not being abraded, okay? So this is why we need the, we need the rotary motion with a malign too, all right? It compensates for the extra wear that's happening in the center of the plate, okay? So that's why we need that rotary in there as well. All right, so let's uh, mix up some abrasive and uh, let's, uh, let's start some lapping and then we'll see, uh, see we'll do a course or we'll do a cycle and, uh, and then we'll clean them off and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna mix up some abrasive, abrasive slurry. So we're using the wet method, okay, which is a free abrasive. Now this is a, uh, what they call a non-charging abrasive. This happens to be Garnet. This is Time Saver uh, from the Micro Abrasive Company. Um, and uh, it's a Garnet, and what happens is the Garnet abrasive actually breaks down under pressure, so it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and then actually becomes inert at some point. Uh, at least that's the uh, the sales pitch, and I found it to be true. So this green label stuff, there's two there's two flavors. There's a a yellow, and this is for red metals, and uh, the green is for uh, steel and uh, uh, cast iron and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and we're just going to start with the very fine here, okay? Uh, like I said, it, it breaks down, and I think these are pretty flat, so it's going to go pretty quick, this initial part. Uh, well, we're going to start with that. We'll see what happens, okay? So I, I have a, you know, this is a ketchup bottle here, and there's a little left in here, and um, I, what I use to thin it with is I just use a charcoal lighter fluid. It's cheap, um, it has the right consistency, and it doesn't evaporate too fast. Um, so people are like, oh my God, that's flammable. Well, you know, so is alcohol and acetone and all the other things that we use in the shop. So this is, you know, no worse than kerosene or, uh, um, just don't use gasoline guys. Okay. That's just, uh, you're just asking for trouble with gasoline. Although a lot of lapping texts will texts, you know, written, written material on lapping. will talk about using gasoline. Just don't do it. Okay. It's not good. All right. So we're going to. Just uh, put some in here, and you know how much you put in. Basically, you need a good concentration in there. I'm just gonna put a couple of shovelfuls in there. Okay. I mean, I already have some in there too. I just I have to cut it a little bit. Let's get some. Okay. Why not? All right. Okay, we'll close that up. So each time you see there's some stuff on the bottom here, I'm gonna get it up in, in suspension. So we get it up in suspension, then we, we put some on, and each time we add some, uh, you wanna make sure you kinda shake it up, just get in that habit uh, so that the abrasive is, is in the carrier, and that solvent is just the carrier here in this situation, okay? So the other thing you're gonna want is some gloves. So let me glove up and uh, let's get ready to go. Okay, so I think I'm ready to go. So I got my little chart here and what I like to do is, is you know, you kind of zone out a little bit when you're doing this. So you need to kind of keep track of where you are in the sequence, right? So I just put something, I just put something on it so I know which one I, I'm on, okay? If I go to the bathroom or go get coffee or something like that, I come back, I go, oh, where was I, right? So I know I, I was on this particular one. So I try to finish before I take a break, then move on to the next one and so on. Okay, so we're gonna be A and B. All right, so there's A, we got B down. Let's go, let's go to town here. Give our, our slurry a little, a little shake. Put some ketchup on the hot dog here. And we're gonna use a fair amount to start with here. Let's see how this goes. This is probably going to be like really boring video. So you see I clocked at about 45 degrees. And then stroke, 45. And then I got, you know, I got these reference marks here. Actually, I'm going to go to short sleeves here in a sec. 
but I can already feel it smoothing out. So it gets quieter and you can actually feel it changing under your hands, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's that's 360 degrees. Now, just because we're filming, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and separate these and then uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, you see that dark stuff? That means we're doing something. So let's, uh, let's clean that off. And when you clean this off, um, you don't want to leave any particles of your of your towel. So, uh, um, you know, uh, paper doesn't actually work that great because it shreds. It tends to shred and uh, uh, and give you trouble. In fact. Uh, Now you can see this, the, well, I don't know, yeah, you probably can't see it that well. But you can see where, where it's actually been uh, uh, abrading. And so I think this, this very fine is gonna work just great, okay? So we're gonna do a, a couple of cycles of that. Um, how many do I wanna do? Well, uh, let me think about it for a second. See how many of those I want to do, and then I got to do a a, ro a couple of rotations. So uh, um, we'll probably do about you know ten minutes of uh, of straight, and then we'll do some rotating, and then uh, we'll cycle through the plates. Okay. I'm just cleaning out some of the the crud so you guys can see. All right, so that's, I don't know, a couple cycles there. And you can still see some remnants of the facing there, but this is all just coming in really nicely here. Um, so this isn't gonna take too long to get these uh, um, through this particular grit here. All right, and now this one's a little, a little, I would say worse. Um, you can see there there's some facing uh, remnants uh, still in there and actually the camera's catching it good there's kind of a light area in the middle here where this is kind of dull and non-reflective so this is the area that's being that's being lapped right now is around the periphery here so pretty cool all right so let's keep going here and um, um, and I'll do some uh, some rotations so you guys can see those too okay so I've gone through um, four um, linear cycles and I actually have uh, these little tags that I use to kind of keep track of uh, which oops, which one I'm on so uh, um, each time I complete 360 degrees of the of the linear that's one uh, one course right so I've done four all together now I don't think we're quite ready for uh, uh, rotation yet because I can still see that the centers of both of these uh, uh, haven't touched down yet so um, I'm gonna do another four uh, this is A on B another four A on B here and I'm gonna go until uh, I see the the centers touching and then um, uh, we'll continue on so let's uh, go back Okay, so I cleaned them real good this time. I washed them with some uh, water and simple green. Um, and, you know, you can see how black this rag is, so we're getting material off of there. There's still a little bit of uh, the, the facing swirls left in it. In it. Uh, this is the bottom one. This would be B. And then A. Um, uh, it's too close to look at. But uh, it has a little more... Um, of the facing uh, marks still left. They're just very faint. Now, I'd be willing to bet at this point that these are actually pretty flat. And uh, for fun, we might just take them over on the surface plate and um, 
I, I made a little spherometer a while back so we can try that on there and calibrate it on the surface plate and then check this in a few places just to kind of see where uh, where things are. So let's uh, let's do that. That sounds like fun. Okay, so we're on the surface plate. So this is the little spherometer I made and what we have here is is basically it's a three point it's on three points here which is kinematic and then we have a little uh, uh, LVDT here in the center okay and uh, so what we can do is we can calibrate it on a known flat surface which is our surface plate here and this is a double uh, A uh, grade and it has a repeat reading of 17 millionths, um, something like that. So what we'll do is we'll use this as our, our quote unquote reference and then we'll come up here and we'll probe around on this and see what, uh, see what we get. So, um, so first, let me uh, adjust this. I always take it off of the, uh, the gauge head. Uh, okay, there it goes, it's going on to it. Now the range I'm on, uh, this is three thousandths total range. Each division is uh, one ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so uh, let's get close here, and we'll probably uh, see, I gotta get over the top of this so I can see. All right, so we'll pick that up, and then we can move it around on the plate. Okay, all right. Now let's uh, with it set or calibrated. Bring it up here and make sure that I'm not uh, dropping into a uh, groove, which I am. You got to be on three points. Okay, so we're less than a tenth right now where I plopped it down. Now, you know, that kind of makes sense because, you know, we faced it in the lathe, so we're probably better than a thou, uh, one thousandths of an inch. Um, you know, right out of the gate, and then we did a little lapping, and so now we're we're better than that. Okay, so you can see that you can create a pretty flat plane pretty quickly, um, you know, with this simple tools. Now you don't need one of these to do this job. Okay, so uh, although this is kind of a fun thing to make, um, you can, uh, um, you know, you can actually make one a very very simple one of these that just does comparisons. So you can compare all the plates together to see if there's differences and so by, by interrogating the plates you can tell which ones are convex and concave and then uh, work those separately. So let's go back and uh, let's continue on with our lapping.